this is Sir Ryan. I'm Ryan Kessler M. Caro. Today, we're going to study the practical research too, particularly the quantitative research. So, we are in a week one, and uh, this is aligned to our most essential learning competency that uh, was given by the Department of Education. So, let us start. So, the most essential learning competency that we have this week is to describe characteristics, strengths, weaknesses, and kinds of quantitative research. So, we have one uh, competency here, but this is very broad. Okay? So, let us start. The quantitative research designs use numbers in stating generalization. So, we focus on numbers here, and also about a given problem of inquiry or inquiry in contrast to the qualitative research that hardly uses statistical treatment in stating generalization. So they are different. Qualitative research and practical research one is more on uh, uh, participants' uh, experiences and opinion and also perspective. However, with regards to quantitative research, it is more on statistical treatment. Numbers. Okay. It is also a uh, systematic investigation in a quantifiable data, performing statistical treatment and also existing potential customers using sampling methods and sending out online surveys, online polls, questionnaires, etc. Okay, so as we have here, this is a sample. We have a single, 33%, married, 47 divorced, 12 um, Widowed eight. So we have the numbers here, the frequency and also the marital status. Next is we have these numbers are a result of objective scales. So as with regards to numbers, the result is objective scales. If I said objectives, it, is, uh, it has choices and it's, uh, specific answers. Example, in our uh, academe, we have the multiple choice, we have the true or false. Research findings are subjected to statistical treatment. So as we have here, characteristics of quantitative research, methods or procedures of data gathering includes items like gender, age, educational status, among others that call for measurable characteristics of the population. So it means that gender, age, and educational status is very important or essential in uh, quantitative research because they have their preferences. So, so age, in educational status, they have uh, their likes, they have their stand. Okay, even the gender, male and female are different. Okay, so we have to consider that in quantitative research. This is a healthcare survey. So uh, as you can see above, we have the date, gender, and age here. A sample survey questionnaire. Number two, we have the standard instrument. A guide for data collection, just ensuring the accuracy, reliability, and validity of the data. So in quantitative research, we need an approved or standard instrument. So we are not the one who will invent it. As far as possible, we can uh, what? Replicate or adapt. Okay? Oh, we have the motorcycle there. So this instrument, could be what? Uh, survey tests, questionnaires, okay, so that we can gather numerical data. So aside from that, we have the flowchart uh, inventories, we have the time, motion logs, projective device observation forms, uh, interview schedules, uh, checklist, tally sheets, uh, with regards to number. So napakahalaga niyan. A large population leads more reliable data, but principle of random something must be strict we followed to prevent researchers bias. So we need a random sampling also in quantitative research to avoid bias. So what is a random sampling is you're gonna select randomly, okay? Don't select them by uh, your likes or by the, uh, according to your topic or according to your title. As far as uh, we can do, randomly, you're gonna pick randomly, okay? You're gonna select randomly. So uh, you're gonna choose uh, participants or respondents uh, not because you like them okay so next is as we can see here so we have to randomly select them 
Next is quantitative method can be repeated to verify findings. So to verify findings, guys, it is easy in quantitative research because it is more on survey forms. Okay? Rather than uh, qualitative research, you have to interview somebody. You have to uh, write it, transcribe it, um, translate if although you have a second language, and then you're going to inform them again about the, what they said. Quantitative research puts emphasis on proof rather than uh, discoveries. Okay, so in quantitative research, what is the proof? Of course, we have the numerical data. Uh, with regards to qualitative research, it is more on experiences, discoveries, or observations. Okay, next, strengths of qualitative research. The strength is, it is more, most reliable and valid way of concluding results. Reliable. Why? Because of the numbers. As what we are right now, uh, we have the surveys or results on COVID-19 uh, patients or even uh, deceased. So we have the result because it is um, what you call that numerically computed. The results of generalization are more reliable valid because of a bigger number of the sample. So in uh, qualitative research or in quantitative research, it is more reliable because we can what? We can get surveys and results or the outcome in the number of people, even million. Because of the survey, because of the uh, research uh, method that we use, uh, we can gather data in the number of thousands, hundred thousands, and thousands, or even million of people. Okay. Compared to qualitative research, it is more an interview on somebody or a group of people. Okay, next, quantitative research, uh, experiment filter and external factors and the result gain can be seen as real and unbiased. So, not you filter po kapag quality, uh, quantitative research. Why? Because uh, in the number of respondents, you can uh, filter that to the best one or to the real outcome. Rather than uh, uh, qualitative research, we can do bias there. In what sense? Uh, because you can select people uh, that can uh, uh, relate to your title. Okay? Next is weaknesses. In weaknesses in, uh, of uh, uh, quantitative research can be costly, difficult, and consuming. Because most researchers are non mathematician In that reason, we need statistics. Okay? So, hindi naman po lahat is a mathematician. So, we need the help of them. Uh, especially outside the uh, public school. In a, a statistician is uh, people who will compute your, um, uh, what you call it, your, your gathered data. So you need to pay them. Okay? Next. Uh, quantitative studies require extensive statistical treatment. So, as the lesson goes, we have uh, different statistical treatment. We have ANOVA, we have a t-test. Okay? So, next. Quantitative method also tend to turn out, out only proved or uh, unproven result. For the social sciences, education, and psychology, human person is a lot more complex than just a simple yes or no responses. So in some uh, field, like as, uh, psychology or social sciences, they focus on the human's, uh, human perspective, opinion, experiences. Uh, uh, and uh, it is important for them because it is uh, more reliable on the side of human intervention or human, uh, what you call that, uh, human explanation, human opinion, human perspective. Uh, you, we couldn't get the real uh, uh, idea. We couldn't get the real uh, sense or experiences by just say, uh, asking yes or no question. Okay? So, that's all for now. Uh, we have the characteristics, we have the strength, and we have the weaknesses of the quantitative research. Okay, again, this is Sir Caro. I hope that I uh, 
inform you or share to you something about this topic in the week one of our uh, practical research too. Bye everyone.